out there about the match, the, the <laughs> word match in the title, match game, millionaire matchmaker. This one will be a ratings draw above the rest unless someone really messes things up. <laughs> and I have no problem throwing people under the bus right away. But I know it's going to be a smash hit because each and every week we're going to be breaking down the week that was in the Canadian Premier League and touching on all the biggest talking points in Canadian soccer. We're going to debate we're going to have analysis. We're going to break it all down. And I know it's going to be a success because I have two charming co-hosts. Oh, handsome, what a guy. opinionated, <laughs> and not afraid to tell it like it is. Jordan Wilson and Christian Jack, welcome to the premiere, the first ever episode of Match Game. It's an honor. You know, I was just thinking, you and I, grill room, Back in mm. 2009, 2008, and Crazy. here we are. And like back when he was like a teenager. You said uh, 2009. <laughs> that's me graduating high school. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love we're, it. We've been part of a lot of first shows. Yeah. This one's going to last, though. I have a good feeling about this one here. What a great first weekend in the Canadian Premier League. For the first time ever, four home winners Crazy. in the first weekend of the season. And in three of the games, the team on the losing side scored first. So three come from behind victories. Atletico Ottawa 2-1 over York. Forge in a rematch of the North Star Cup final. Beat Cavalry 2-1. Pacific clean sheet against Halifax Wanderers. And the match that you just watched Sunday night on One Soccer, Vancouver FC. An emphatic 4-1 victory over 10 men. Valor. Let's start right there, based on what we just saw. All kinds of expectations. And quite frankly, Ashton Goppy and Vancouver weren't shying away from it as well. This team was an expansion group last season, but now it seems like they've turned the corner. What kind of evidence did you see that this team could potentially be a contender based upon what we just saw? I think what I'll focus on, because I know my, my friend KJ will focus on the other bit, but it's just the attacking options that they have going forward wheels. Batar, Diaz, Dyer. Like I said, a guy who played two years in this league, the two players that gave him the most handful were Dyer and Diaz off of their movement. But then Dyer, just the, the, the prowess, the power that he has. You look at this, this is a, a goal that we'll see more of. Just a partnership of Diaz's movement, Dyer making the run off of it, finishing it. And you look at this Vancouver FC side, KJ. They just have a lot of bodies that know how to score and know how to finish. Yeah, they're a confident bunch. You know, this is a moment in the game for me that turns everything. You know, if you're Valor, you play well in the first half. You come out in the second half, you just give up a goal before half time. And then you give that one up that you want back with your goalkeeper, no doubt about it. And then after that, they're a team, I think, with very much a momentum side. Once they get goals, they're going to continue that. We saw that last year, they've got goals in them. We mentioned Batar again here. We talk about him every single week. Again, he is involved in a lot of things. He has the ability to strike really well. Again, I have to say, I thought Wiro Diaz, he didn't score a goal, but that's one of the best individual performances yeah. I've seen in the Canadian Premier League game. He was absolutely magnificent, involved in so much. So as you alluded to, you got Dia, you got Dia, and you got Diaz, the dynamic duo mm. of Ds up front. <laughs> uh, this is going to be a fun, fun season. The, the reason why I think that they can really do some damage here is just look at the attacking talent in this team. And, and that's the way the game of football, not only in this country, but worldwide, is gone. You just need to have players that can put the ball in the back of the net, be proactive, be progressive in terms of their attacking play, and they absolutely have it in spades. A little bit of controversy in this game as well. In the second half, Jordan Faria was sent off. His second cautionable offense, this one came from an apparent dive or an alleged dive in the opposition box. Alan Roosh, we should call the segment Roosh to Judgment. And Alan Roosh, without hesitation, believed there was a dive on this play. Well, this is the first yellow, That was the right? first yellow yeah, card this is what the he first got. time he pulled it back. No problem with that. Yeah, that, that's fair. And that was eight minutes before the, the next yellow that leads to the red. And, and for me, I'm in two minds, KJ. I, I don't know how you feel about this one. But for me, like, he's falling before he gets touched by Norman. I'm also looking at Norman's face. He's looking like, oh, this could be a pen. But... You're just thinking maybe is this a no call, just letting it go, but to give him the caution, give him the red, you think it's justified? Yeah, I'm not in two minds. For me, it's a clear red card. You know, I think it's become, a, you know, a, dif a difficult situation in the, world, in the world game than ever to referee. Now, we're not in a VAR error in, in, in the CPL. You wonder in those moments what would have happened. 
Um, but I like to see referees who are dynamic in their decision making. And he was right away. He had a great view. He understood exactly what he's doing. And I've seen it a lot in the world of football now where a forward will try and dribble. I saw Vinicius do it recently, and he's a great player. I'm not picking on him. But they trail legs and expect contact. Saka. Saka uh, does Saka's it. Does it. Yeah, there's family. a lot of players out there well. now, and, it, and it's become part of their DNA that makes them an outstanding, particularly wide players, an outstanding player. The ability to... Sorry, but it's a, it's a strong word, but con the opposition and cheat the opposition by gaining an advantage. And for me, he tries to do it, and it's, it's the right decision. And you have to put the, the yellow card down there. Whether, there's a, whether he's got one or not, he's done the right thing. He's followed by the letter of the law, and I commend the referee. It's just harsh that it's the second yellow. Yeah. Uh, there was a little bit of contact, but did Faria initiate it? Initiated the contact. It looked yeah. like he did. Yeah. Yeah. There, by the way, there was another caution given for simulation in the area with Mickey Cantav doing very similar. I thought it was even more blatant and more obvious. I will say, and simulation is very hard to determine, Definitely. right? For, for, particularly when there's a bit of contact. You know, it's very difficult. Then you get into this idea of discussion about meaning. Did he mean it? Did he not mean it? You know, because simulation is an act of, you know, for, a decision made by that point. So um, I think it's a hard thing for a referee to call, but I, I, I give him a lot of props. And, and VAR, the way that it's used, would there be enough to reverse that? I'm not quite sure that would have even settled a situation like this. Just very quickly on Valor, nine new players in the starting 11. Only five players returning to the 18 from last season. Just give them some time. Six more away games in the Canadian Premier League to come before their first home match. It was a rematch of the Canadian Premier League final yesterday at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. The North Star Cup winners Forge took on Cavalry. A lot of similarities from what we saw in the final, KJ. You were in Hamilton for that game. We were all there for the final where Cavalry took the lead in extra time. Then two goals from the heavens gave, ensured that Forge went on to lift the North Star Cup yet again. Calvary scored first in the second half yesterday. Then the same two goal scorers from the final, yeah. Borges and Badabanga, do it to Calvary again. What did you learn? What were your takeaways from this game? Well, I thought Calvary took a deserved lead. I thought they played really well in the first half. It was a tight game. The wind definitely played a part in it. Uh, we know what this team does in the Canadian Premier League. Scored more goals from set pieces than any team last year, and right away they get on it. Camargo in his 100th appearance. Uh, but what I learned a lot is that if Borges, Baddy Banger and Para can play a lot of minutes together down that left-hand side, the combination play is going to be lethal. I was very impressed with Para down the left-hand side. He, he's a very athletic and technical player. He can run all day. Great to see Borges back to his best. And this man here, Baddy Banger, is a player of the year candidate, no doubt about it. Uh, it's, it's a difficult time right now for Cavalry. I won't mention the player, but he looked at me as he walked down the tunnel at the end of the game and just said, uh, bleep again. Uh, so, you really? know, it's like, you know, again, you know, how many more times can they continue to feel like that, that this is going to happen? Look, I will say I thought Tommy Wilden Jr. got it, got it right in the presser. There's a lot to like about it. It's match one of 28. Yeah. But those of us in the media are supposed to make up stories or continue finding stories. We'll just continue to say that, again, Forge got the better of Cavalry, John. Qu quickly, we got to talk about Para because yeah. this, this finding and signing for Forge FC, getting that left footer that loves to go down that flank, the way he's picking out passes, I know it's game one. It's one of those things, right? We always want to get the bounce, right? You don't want to get too excited. But you could see something there. And this is a missing piece that Forge FC needed. But if you get a healthy Tristan Borges playing like himself and just messaging him and just speaking to him, he feels like himself. He feels like this is his time. And last season was something he never wants to experience or really talk about He only about started again. 11 games last right? year. And like, two goals. You're thinking Tristan Borges with all that quality. Two goals last season. Already he's off to the, the right start. Well, Schwanier, Borges being effective. They're like new signings. No Cisse, no Matuslo, no Nana. Like, <laughs> this was a weakened Forge side. Cavalry, the most disappointing part for me was they started off with a more defensive group. They brought on all kinds of attacking talent, and they weren't able to find their foot in the game. That's not something that Tommy Wilden Jr. will be thrilled about. So plenty more to come from both these teams uh, who continue to set the bar incredibly high here in the Canadian Premier League. Uh, the other side that has actually won a North Star Cup is Pacific FC. Yet they had their distractors. They had people questioning them what they'd be all about heading into the 2024 campaign after losing Manny Aparicio and Amir Didich in the offseason. Well, they answered those critics with a home win, a clean sheet, no less, against Halifax. Facts Wanderers. Their captain yesterday was Thomas Mayer Jaguer. Really, the defense was resolute, difficult to break down, and he was thrilled about his team's performance. I think it gives us a lot of confidence because I think a lot of people had doubt when we lost some 
players last year, uh, the, uh, this offseason. So it gives us a lot of confidence, and it just shows that uh, football is a team sport. Huh? We all defend together. I saw when Eric Lajeunesse came on, monster. He blocked everything, and that's what we need from everyone. And congrats everyone at the back line, even in Belgazdov. Very great game. Thank you so much. Look, it was a pragmatic, gritty performance. Not the exact same, KJ, as Pacific going to Halifax last season and winning 1-0 in the playoffs, but I think it did tell you something about that side. Maybe this team has a lot more to them than those two star players that left over the course of the offseason. Yeah, look, there's a lot of things that Pacific have ingrained them themselves over the last few years. James Merriman's carried on from Palmer Ducar, and that's the ability to start well and play well at home. And they got away from them in the second half of the season. Last year, they just won one of their last foot six at home. They were nowhere near as good, good enough. Great to see some young players and getting combined, the new players coming in. And, and I think more could be a big difference maker. You yes. know, they really struggled last year to get any goals from the number nine position. I think they got two all season from the starting number nine, when Ongaro didn't even score at all as a starter last mm -hmm. year. They struggled. So I, I like the guy more. I think he can be, bring something. And a big year ahead for this man, Salute, a big year. Absolutely. And, and KJ, I just want to speak a little bit about Pacific FC and the, the brand of football that they like to play. They're not a team that does route one, that skips lines, midfielders that want to get on the ball. They want to connect. They want to pass. They want to make sure everyone's involved. And I think what we saw a little bit, at least this is my opinion from the last season, Wheels, is that when it came to the crosses in the box, those moments where you have Angaro or Daniels to put the ball in the back of the net and they are missing, it looked like the, the sense from the players from Pacific were like, we're doing everything right. Yeah. We're putting the balls in the area, but yet we're getting a point or we're losing games. What's going on? There's a bit of frustration. So I think going to this 2024 season, Zanata, the more, they need to just do that work of getting in the area. And if they could find success more than they don't, this is a Pacific side that will grow with confidence because they have the type of players and they play a certain way. There's no going away from that brand, which is getting on the ball, dictating the tempo of the game, and they have enough players to do that. I'm thrilled for their young goalkeeper, Emil Gazdov, came over with a clean sheet, made a really good save, probably the best save of the weekend as well. Obviously a big learning curve last season, could take a really big step forward. In Halifax, their game model was excellent. It's just Who's going to put the ball into the back of the net? A little bit of a question there. I thought Nimic was outstanding once again at the back. So here's the table. Look at that. An opening weekend with four wins. It's the first time that's happened. Remember how many draws there were to start last season? <laughs> like over the first month, there was more draw draws in the Canadian Premier League by percentage than any other league in world football. Wild. But four teams with three points for the first weekend in the Canadian Premier League. The one team, the one matchup we haven't addressed yet is Atletico Ottawa and York United. We'll dig into the new look at Letty side next. It's match night! Match night! <laughs> Power doesn't sound like it used to. The all-electric ID4 with instant acceleration. Electric feels good. Volkswagen. Do we really have any choice at all? Everyone has a choice, and every choice has a consequence. Which do you choose? Life's full of tough choices. Yeah, How do you choose? to the ultimate without breaking the bank? You choose the big, bold, ultimate taste of ultimate chicken sausages and hot dogs. Choose ultimate taste and value only from Maple Lodge Farms. $450? Go ad free for $29.99. Only three easy payments of $49.99 if you act now. We make thousands of financial decisions every day. Each one affects bigger decisions tomorrow. Stay on top of it all with the CIBC Smart Account.
Welcome back to the first ever episode of Match Night. Clearly, definitely not Match Game. Wheeler, Wilson, <laughs> KJ with you. Uh, we kicked off the 2024 Canadian Premier League season in our nation's capital, Atletico Ottawa, in a 2-1 come from mind victory over York United. And with Atletico Ottawa, there's not a bigger buzz team in the Canadian Premier League than what's being assembled with the, two, two, uh, with the 2022 Canadian Premier League regular season winners. If you were a significant name in the Canadian Premier League, you probably ended up signing for Atletico <laughs> Ottawa. Um, it was an impressive victory in the way that they managed to pull it out. Let's hear from their manager, Carlos Gonzalez, as well as the match winner, one of the newcomers, and Chris Twardick. Uh, wins give you a you know, air to breathe. So this is important to start winning, to to be calm, to know and acknowledge that we've done nothing, that we're still building a team, that we're still, we still have to work on so many things, you know. But at the same time, it's good to see uh, that a tough game, like the game that we had today, we were capable to to bounce it back and to, and to grab the three points at home. So yeah, I'm very happy for it. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I actually, honestly, I had a vision the day before that something like that could happen just because all my friends and family were right in that section, probably about a hundred of them. And uh, as soon as I scored, I just went blind, ran right towards uh, towards them. Uh, but it was pretty special, yeah. We'll get to Twardik's <laughs> celebration. It was a good one. Wow. A little bit later on. Uh, if you're not familiar, we should remind you of the many, many players that they signed over the course of the offseason. Uh, taking a look, like Manny Aparicio, of course, uh, scored a goal, provided the assist on Twardich, Matt, Twardich's match winner. Look at the talent assembled in our nation's capital. It, it's wild. It wasn't anywhere near a complete picture. It was a little bit messy at times. It was a complete different side that we saw on the weekend, vulnerable defensively, wide open at times. As Carlos Gonzalez figures out how to put all of these puzzle pieces together, what did you make of their performance? Was it what you expected, Jordan? Um, I mean, I would say a lot of cooks could spoil the broth. It could be one of those things where a lot of players coming in. But I would say to get back into a game that you're down 1-0 always shows a bit of character. This is going to be a team with their chemistry. It's going to take some time. I think Carlos Gonzalez um, will probably break down a little bit more KJ, but you're looking at how many midfielders they have and how many game changers they have. And to balance that and get them all on the pitch at, at the same time, um, it was a good start. But there's definitely some dissecting he's going to need to do to, to get the most out of this team. But any opening weekend and any time that Atletico Ottawa can Brilliant go down. Brilliant service here, by the way. Oh, for sure. Brilliant for what a finish. But anytime that Atletico Ottawa can come back and, 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 and get back into a game and get three points at home, it's a good day. It's a really good day. You know, you mentioned it for me, the term game changers, difference makers, whichever your preference is. They've got a few of them now on the field, right? I mean, I, first of all, you know, the first goal, Balu Tabla is positioning in the corner is very unusual to have a player of that attacking prowess to be on the edge of the box. That's very, very intelligent for me at that point. Um, and then obviously having Manny Aparicio for his delivery in that, in that moment. He just knows how to find the, the spotlight in this league, so to speak. So, look, I thought it was uh, a game where performance-wise, they probably didn't deserve to win. Uh, and York certainly deserves something out of it. But unfortunately, on the York end of things, they have a habit of leaving points on the table mm -hmm. in, in some big moments, and they did it again. It was a better team performance from the visiting side, mm -hmm. yet the team with the better talent ended up winning out. I don't think that could be the recipe moving forward for Atletico Ottawa, but it was good enough this weekend. There are, will be questions about the way that certain players are being utilized. We pointed it out in, 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 a, in, a, in a broadcast over the course of the weekend. Ollie Bassett, the best player in the Canadian Premier League, arguably over the last two seasons, KJ, has shifted from playing in the middle of the park to playing wide right. Now, he did come in from time to time. But you took a closer look at the role that he was playing. What did you see? Yeah, I think this is fascinating. Let's break down some clips. We saw glimpses of it last year when they tried to figure things out. He played wide left in Halifax, for example. Uh, but there are some situations where I'd like to really get into. So we're going to play this, and I'm going to pause it in crucial areas to show the system. Didic picks up the ball here. There's Twardik. We give it a little bit of a pause there. You can see this is their system, essentially. Didic is there with Singh. At that point, you can see 
Zapater drops back into the back three. Simple. And then you've got your fullbacks, Twardic and De Brienne. But no Aparicio to be seen at this point. So play it through. So that's Aparicio at that point. And then there's Bassett. And crucially, in a right, wide right area, which I think is fascinating to see. Now, they did mix it up a little bit and bring Sissoko there to do the press at times. But as you play in this crucial moment for me, this is interesting. There's your back three again. And instead of focusing on Ottawa for a second, I want to focus on York and where the space is. And at this moment, if this is Twardock making the run on the right-hand side, this is Sissoko here. And this is where last year, Jordan, we saw a lot of Oli Bassett. Yes. In the pocket, not beyond the ball, ball received to him, allow space to develop. It's all about finding Bassett's space. And for me to not see him in that position is an interesting one if we play through. I just want to pause it right there quickly. If we could we just, just pause yeah, it, yeah, just sorry. Just what I'm noticing as well. Look how many Atletico Ottawa players are, are ahead of the ball right now, yeah. KJ. You have Ali Bass about to get on there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where's the balance for this side? Wheels. When we were watching this game, right, this is literally an Atletico Ottawa team that's been flipped on its axis. Before they're always thinking about what could happen if we lose the ball. Get behind. Now, the ball. yeah, it's contrary. We're gonna go forward. Yeah. There's no balance. If Ali Bass right now loses it. Yeah. York United are going Transition, forward, and which, they have so many numbers. Which could have happened right there. Exactly. Aparicio picks it up here at this point. But this is interesting because Bassett is basically playing a right wing, wing role, trying to win the ball in one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, he gave the ball away 22 times. It was a team high yesterday. Fascinating to think that. But again, it's the system in place. You can see De Brienne and Suarez playing wide inside. you got Zapater. Watch this pass now from Sig. He goes long. Who's playing that pass to? Who's he playing it to? He's trying this, to find Bassett. Bassett's right there. <laughs> he's, the, he's beyond the ball as a number nine. And what happens when you see when you recycle it, play it through again. He just gets out of the out of the play. And for me, in these areas, this is where I want Bassett here on the ball there, not Sam Salter. And in the end, Bassett now becomes in this position and he's running beyond the ball again. I want Bassett here in this position in particular. So it's one thing to say what we want. What does Con Carlos Gonzalez want? He's played this by design. So what can we imagine that Carlos Gonzalez wants from these positions? Play it through. What we can say is in this system, you can get Bassett into clear areas wide on the, in, 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 in this position to create moments. But this is where I would imagine him would be in Sissoko. But when he gets this, this pass here sets up the corner that he actually Bassett takes that led to the first goal. This is the other one, the, the big moment in the match. And again, you can see Twardek plays a huge role in this. Watch Twardek, pause it there for one second for me. Just go back a little bit if you don't mind. This here is where York United lose the game. This is where York United lose the game. Ricci and Twardek and Bassett plays a role in this. Again, they know when to go long, we'll play it through. Did it, should get it involved, goes long. Where is he going? Look again, the aforementioned Bassett. Okay, now we're gonna pause it here and watch this. Where is Ricci? Twardek's there on his own. He's gonna go beyond it. But the pass, interestingly, as you've got Bassett in one-on-one -on -one situation with that, Bassett is no longer making that run himself. It's Twardek, play it through. And the pass, I think, is really important because at that point, you set it up for the one timer over the top. And now Napolisio does the rest because he goes back and wins it off. That's a really difficult ball to, to give away by Samaro. And the rest is history as they get the three points. So for me, it's an interesting system, guys. And, you know, I'm trying to think about what Con Carlos Gonzalez wants out of this. One comparison I thought about, you don't really see technical playmakers playing in a front three. One area I remember Spain, Euro 2012, when they had Xavi Alonso, Busquets and Xavi. They had Iniesta playing in that role in hold-up play. So you don't have two dynamic players going beyond the ball. You have that dynamic play. So there's a lot of areas that I think Carlos Gonzalez and his coaching staff have thought about. But the one thing I do think about is that I'd be fascinated to know what Oli Bassett thinks of it. Because what might be best for the team, I don't think is best for him. He was golden boot winner last year, player of the year before. And I know Bassett, maybe in his final year of his contract, maybe they're thinking beyond this year. There's a lot wow. of things into this. I don't know. Uh, but it's early, but that's what we're in this business for, is to dissect these things. And it's fine to speculate, because watching this 90 minutes, Ali Bassett is being sacrificed. Whether that is by design, it's, he's being sacrificed. Because he was the one last year to get the ball and to create the tempo. And the one to go up, if they're it's playing fast, everything. for sure. Yeah. Now... What's happening, granted, this is a York United team that played well, but when you're playing Calvary, when you're playing Halifax, when you're playing Forge, someone is, is giving it to Ali Bassett because now he's not a guy finding space. 
He's the one going to be tackled. Asking him to go, you're asking him to go and try to hold up or, or combine. There are things that cause Gonzalez needs to get right because he has a lot of studs, superstars on his team. But you still have to get your players doing what they it's do just best. Taking your best player and putting him in a different position. You don't see it all the time. But hey, when you live in Hollywood, sometimes you need to play different <laughs> roles, and sometimes it works. Jim Carrey, Eternal Sunshine, completely different genre for him. We'll see if this works for Ollie Bassett as well. There's been highs and lows for Atletico Ottawa from the start. Their expansion year, eighth, then to first. Incredible. Last year, just one win in their last eight games, finishing sixth place. And you felt the pressure emanate through the entire club. Not just the players, the coaching staff, like their fans, everyone felt it. And what happened last season simply can't replicate itself this season. And now they have even more pressure because of all these marquee signings. They've gone above and beyond, and they become the it club in terms of talking points in the Canadian Premier League. The manager has to get it right. But KJ, this isn't naturally in his profile, at least what we've seen from Carlos Gonzalez, being able to play with all these attacking weapons. Meanwhile, having the, the ability to maintain that defensive structure and shape. So what do you make of the challenge? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm fascinated by it because uh, I don't think Carlos Gonzalez by design is a negative defensive coach, um, but that's what we've seen in the first two years. You showed the stats and the finishing positions. Uh, they had 43% uh, of possession uh, the year they won. Last year, they had 43% possession. The year they won, they were seventh out of eight in penalty box entries. Last year, seventh out of eight in penalty box entries. The difference was starts. And once they got behind in games last year, they could not recover. They started well in the year and they held the leads. So it's great for me to see that they were able to come and win a TPL league match for the first time when they've trailed. Uh, and I think Carlos Gonzalez is an outstanding coach, but now is the time to show what he can do to get the best out of these players. Uh, and I think it'll be fascinating to watch, but I do think there'll be growing pains. I think one, too, an area that we need to talk about, if you're looking at the number nine position, the way that this team plays, I know Tabla, even his best season uh, for 2022, there were seven goals. Um, Ali Bassett, great from the penalty spot, great at free kicks, but... Are they a team that are, are going to just be combining and shooting from distance? They still need a Del Campo or a Sam Salter, or if you want to play the Baloo Tabla, maybe at a false nine, but someone to cause havoc for the other teams. Agreed. It's early, but I just don't know who that gentleman is. By the way, um, the first game for York United under new ownership, the Pascal brothers, big venture for them, and we'll see where this ends up. Disappointing way to start the year because you feel like they had it. They had the chances to go out and win that game. The best away team in the Canadian Premier League last season, that close with coming from coming away with something in Ottawa on the weekend. Uh, we here at One Soccer Home for the 2024 TELUS Canadian Championship. Look at that, the 23rd. What's that, nine, 10 days away? Come on. Right around the corner, 14 teams. There'll be one champion, the Vancouver Whitecaps. Hopes it, hope it's them for the third consecutive year. All matches live right here on One Soccer. Like any show like this, I mean, we got segments. Best and worst. That is the segment, and it's next. <laughs> hey, let's go somewhere beachy. I don't like sand. What? What about Cancun sand? so soft or maybe caribbean white sand sure. oh costa rican sand it's got dolphins costa rica then yeah costa rica good choice it was all him with over 50 sunny destinations to choose from we have a flight for that doesn't sound like it used to. The all-electric ID4 with instant acceleration. Electric feels good. Volkswagen. Tony Bip. 
Tony Bet get treated like a VIP. Bet on live games with odds on all sorts of sports. That's what you get when you bet with Tony Bet. 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 bet, bet. This is Match Night. Welcome back to the program. Wheeler, Wilson, KJ with you. This segment is called Best and Worst. Best <laughs> and Worst. And I'm okay with it because these guys are up here. Segment is simple. Some of the things that caught our eye over the course of the week and the weekend that are the best, some are the worst, and some, I'm going to have to ask your opinion whether it is the best or the worst. Let's start off with Ismail Kone. Okay. I mean, oh, we'll go with the Eagle first. I mean, just as sharp as Kone. <laughs> this was the coin toss ceremonial introduction for Vancouver FC and Valor. A bald eagle flying down with a coin and landing on Callum Irving's hand. He's the goalkeeper. Hands are very important. This is the, one of the better things I've ever seen. The other challenge is for every other team in the Canadian Premier League yep. to have some kind of animal <laughs> present the coin for the ceremonial co coin toss. I think we all agree this is the best. This is class. This is the best. Yeah, it's the best. Look, sure. When you're looking at this as well, you can't lose after that. When you put out the arm, true. the eagle comes. When they went down 1-0, I said, you guys better score some goals. No chance you can start the game with the eagle like this. Uh, yeah. Comes, yeah. and then what, you lose? No. It was amazing. Like, it, it flew around a little bit. I was like, uh-oh, is it going to land? It went rogue. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Now Ismail Kone time. The Watford Canada midfielder scored a brilliant goal. Turned out to be a 3-2 loss against Southampton. That's not on Kone. That, that's a great finish right there. Yeah, it's one of the best. Yeah, I love this goal. Uh, a great moment. It's a great knee slide as well. We'll get to knee slide shortly. But that's a, <laughs> that's a really good knee slide. But, you know, what I like about this, Jordan, is just how he glided through mm -hmm. midfield, you know, and then opened his body up and just noticed the pass. That's what we want more from Kone. He's told us that himself. Um, you know, add more goals to his game. And Watford have been up and down. They were up and down in the game. But yeah. Great to see. It shows Ismail Kone what he can do, and that's yeah. what he likes to do, that term. But just the way he glides and, and moves past players. But then a little dash of Kyle Aaron finish. Like, to open mm. up the hip, he makes it look easy. That's the top of the box, guys. Yeah. Like, to open it up, to put that pace on it, comfortable strike, slots in the corner, it's the best. Yeah. 15th place in the table, not the best. Yet another manager, Tom Cleverly. Not the best. <laughs> I'm not going to say the worst, but, but not the best. But uh, good on Ismail oh. Kone. Uh, Alistair Johnston, two more assists on the weekend. Celtic 3-0 victory over St. Marin. I've seen a lot of this from Johnston this season. I think his service just continues to continue to get better and better, Jordan. Yeah, it's improving bit by bit, right? And if, if I were to say objectively, that was probably, or subjectively, that was probably a weakness in his game. Like, I would say he was a very good 1v1 defender. But just now he's added that bit of quality, and that's what separates KJ good from great. Yeah, big week for Celtic. Rangers got beat today as well. So uh, Alistair Johnson getting one step closer to another league title. Um, outstanding. Great, uh, great delivery. Um, you know, you can just see he his head up and right away. Great, so, uh, great, a great cross. So that was the best part of Alistair Johnson's weekend. We also have the worst part <laughs> of his weekend. Roll the tape. You had to fight the conditions, I think, as much as St Mirren on the pitch. Ah, it, was, it was really windy that first half. It was really difficult. I think it made us a bit predictable in the first half, just in terms of it was difficult to play a ball in behind so they could get really tight to us. Um, the second half with the wind. Um, and again, our play style wears teams down. You can see in the second half. Hey! Hi! Hi! Woo! Hey, buddy! Hey. It happens, though. It does. Hi. You move somewhere and you name, conform. Like, Johnston. You move he's, somewhere and you conform. It happens. It happens a lot. It happens to the best of us. We, we, got, we got to get him out of Scotland. What's Stevie Caldwell saying? <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Hi. That's great. Every uh, he's, he's, he's fitting in well, boys. I, I'm, it's, you guys are going worst. I'm going best. Uh, it's fine. It's oh, fine. I'm all right. I'm all right. love you, Alex. I love you, buddy. Uh, this one. It's a coin flip. I don't know where you're going to go with this. I is this the it. best or the worst? It's not the Chris Twardick oh. a match winner. It's the celebration. Turf, <laughs> artificial surface. No. He goes knees down, Ew. slides. <laughs> no, no, can't have Look. that. 
I, you cannot do a no. DDA drug boy knee no. slide can't. on turf. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know why? Just watch how fast he gets up from it. That's what tells you the regret is that the instant regret <laughs> is get up quick. Because if he loved it, he'd stay down. <laughs> I don't, he's not going to score a goal in his debut in Ottawa ever again, but I guarantee he's probably never going to do that ever again. Look, there's oh, pictures of man. him just with the bloody yeah. knees yeah. at the end of the match. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what a guy. You know, they, I mean, I wouldn't know this. You tell me. You scored that. You, some people say you just black out when you score, right? He's just having that moment where... I mean, I think he feels... <laughs> I think he feels like he's in the Premier League with that one. Yeah, <laughs> there's he, no he, reason to do a knee He was slide. playing in Ireland lush, wet pitches. If he didn't is, slide, I thought like, he was just going to keep running and jump in the yeah. stands. So. I'm just impressed he stayed up because as soon as he feel that, it was, oh, and yeah, like, he could have just yeah. gone over Ooh, and lost some chocolates. Great goal, buddy. Uh, great goal. It wasn't the worst thing that happened <laughs> at TD Stadium. Oh, Austin Ricci. Oh, oh Austin Ricci. That miss. Uh, I mean, I hate to be harsh, but this is a candidate for miss of the season. Yeah. Am I being too harsh? No. You're not. No. He's my boy, and it, it, it hurts. And and no when one. he missed it. The and the bat name. This, one, this one's on a platter for the young man. Oh. Ball, but you just think you got to attack that. I feel like he might have closed his eyes. The bounce didn't help him, but you're so close here, KJ. Two yards out. At least get it on frame. Can, can we take a moment to just give a little bit of props to Martin Nash and what, Martin, what coaching must be like? You set a game plan. You go out there and you press. You dominate for about 45 minutes. And then you have those two moments, and you got to go give a talk at halftime going, guys, like... You know, as coaches, you can set up whatever you want, but ultimately, the and players have got to deliver. Yeah. And, and we didn't show the moment. Up 1-0, Richie could have just yeah. squared, squared it, it to Brian, Brian, right. Brian Wright. They're up 2-0 at that point. Yeah, right? And then it's an uphill battle for Athletic Ottawa. Tough one. Yeah. At least their knees aren't bleeding. <laughs> That's a positive thing. At least Richie got his goal. At least he's off the mark. I, KJ. I. <laughs> if you have any suggestions for the best or the worst, hit us up at One Soccer. Uh, we'll dig into the Canadian men's national team, the latest on the head coaching search. How far along is it? Some of the names and candidates, where we stand. That's coming up next on a little show we're calling Match Night! Match Night! It's Match Night! We created Carlsberg 0-0 because even the best things can be better. Where I go if we be. Uh -oh. Clean one-handed backhand is better. Balancing stuff is better. Whatever this is, it's better. We created Cosmo. Skipping your own ad is better. Parking in space, better. So, can the best alcohol free beer make good things better? Probably. How do you go from the best to the ultimate without breaking the bank? You choose the big, bold, ultimate taste of ultimate chicken sausages and hot dogs. Choose ultimate taste and value only from Maple Lodge Farms. Would you like the extended warranty for $150? Go ad free for $29.99. Only three easy payments of $49.99 if you act now. We make thousands of financial decisions every day. Each one affects bigger decisions tomorrow. Stay on top of it all with the CIBC Smart Account. Gatorade. With electrolytes to help replenish what's lost in sweat. Carbs to help fuel your working muscles. And fluids to help you hydrate. Scientifically formulated so you never stop competing. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Gatorade. hour non-stop protection antiperspirant with motion sense tested to the limit degree keeps working when others stop
Welcome back to Match Night. Gareth Wheeler, Jordan Wilson, Christian Jack with you. Here is the road ahead for the Canadian men's national team. I love that unconfirmed. <laughs> Seems like the, the worst kept secret out there. Canada, France, June 9th in Bordeaux. Coming right after uh, an international friendly against the Netherlands. All in preparation. That's the date you circle. June 20th, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Kicking off Copa America against the world champions. Argentina. Lionel Messi v Canada. We cannot wait for it. The first of three group stage games in this expanded Copa America competition. And here on the show, we're turning our focus to the Canadian men's national team in a segment that we're calling, it's a working title, Oh Canada, <laughs> Oh Baby, presented by CIBC. And Kristen Jack, her very own, reported yesterday that Tommy Wielden Jr. and Bobby Smirniotis, two Canadian Premier League managers, are in the mix, or the potential mix, to be the next head coach of the Canadian men's national team, there's been a bunch of candidates who have been linked to the job. Here are some of them right there. Some we know are in the mix. Some, like Frank Lampard, seemed a little bit wild and unsubstantiated, quite frankly. Um, I'll let you guys com comment more on that. But based upon where we stand right now, KJ, in what direction should Canada soccer be going with this managerial search? Yeah, well, I mean, from what, from what I'm hearing, it's a, a very wide search for casting an international net, which I think is great, and in order to capture the next the next head coach, you know, I think we have to understand that um, here in Canada, there's a lot of negativity around the game, unfortunately, at the moment. Hopefully, we've passed that most of the time. But this is absolutely a job that many people would want. And why wouldn't you? You know, an opportunity to work with a bunch of rising international superstars and just two years out from being a host of the World Cup. Yeah. You know, what an opportunity. By the way, Canada would just be the 19th team to 19th country to ever get to host a men's World Cup um, under the FIFA special tournament that it is. So, you know, so what, what do they want to do? So obviously they've, they've, they've started the, the search, as I alluded to yesterday in our broadcast. Um, they have mentioned Bobby Smyniotis and Tommy Wilden Jr. as both, uh, you know, potential people that they want to talk to. Um, I think that's it for now. I don't want to go on and say that they're going to get the job. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to say and to add that, you know, there are a number of international candidates that have expressed interest. One, which is not Frank Lampard, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so we can just quash that rumor right away that that is not happening uh, for lots of different reasons. But yeah, look, there's a, there's a big search on here, Jordan, and they've got to get it right. They do. And I, I think for me, just being a fan of the game and, and wanting Canada to do well internationally, they need someone to come into that locker room that just has the respect, that can take their, yeah. their, their game to a different level. You're looking at the Kyle Aarons, Jonathan David, the Alfonso Davies, all these guys. Tayshon, we can go down the list of the, the studs that Canada has, but I think now it's time to elevate. No one expected such a rapid rise with this team. Like, we always knew that Canada had talent, but now they're just, like, big-name players worldwide. And it kind of happened quickly. For some people that are just catching on, it seems like overnight. But I think now, too, it's the, the caliber of coach that needs to come with that. Um, to, to coach this team and to really stress these guys. It shouldn't be a vacation when they're coming in or it shouldn't be a, a step down or, or players. They should be challenged, right? And I think whoever's coming in, and that's why the names like Thierry Henry or whoever it might be that have had such an illustrious career, they're so enticing because you know what you're going to get if those type of uh, coaches come in. Whoever it is, I just hope that they're bought in and they can really just take the seat. And, the next and there'll level. be different sentiments depending who you ask about what type of manager who would make for the best new head coach of the Canadian men's national team. Timing is, is a funny thing here. We've waited since last fall, since John Herman stepped away from this job. Mauro Biello has been the interim had, and has had the interim tag on him. All the meanwhile, a new general secretary with limited experience in the game, Kevin Blue, was hired. There's so many questions about who's actually going to be part of the decision-making process. What's clear to me right now, KJ, is all the roads are suggesting that Biela will be in charge of this group come Copa America. Yeah, possibly. Uh, I think they need to make a decision by then, though, whether that is Biela full-time or not. I, I, I still think that there's time. I really do. Uh, and I'm happy to hear and report that they are in that process. You know, I'm hearing, guys, that, you know, Kevin Blue is getting involved you know, what he would describe as being people that he trusts within the game. Uh, some former players have been involved in these, form in, in these discussions uh, with Kevin Blue and some candidates. It hasn't got to the point yet where they've had informal uh, interviews in person. 
but that this is happening. This is happening. This is not some internal discussions. It might or might, they are they are understanding the priority of this going forward, uh, and those discussions are happening. You know, they're talking to certain people to, to figure out who they're going to speak to in, in person. As I said, I'm not involved in those processes, but I'm aware of them. I would say this, you know, when you break down what is needed from these coaches, and Jordan just made a great point with the presence in that dressing room, for me it starts with right at the very top, I would be figuring out what this coach is, is, is like when it comes to emotional intelligence. Maybe I'm a bit you know, tainted. That's what I need. It, for me, it's emotional intelligence straight away. Yeah. And the ability that comes from it to do everything that you need from that self-awareness, empathy, motivation, and with emotional intelligence and a record in the game with mm -hmm. a presence yep. that you can walk into that dressing room. The other thing, too, is that this is from my own observations. I think some people within that squad should have a bigger voice mm. and don't. And I think some people in that squad have a bigger voice and shouldn't. Yes. And for me, it's time to have the true voice to come in, who everybody looks up to and respects. And when you've got people like Alfonso Davies working for the caliber of manager that he's had, and now you think about what Jonathan David is doing, and you think about what Kyle Lahren and where he's managed, Alistair Johnson with Postacoglu and Brendan Rodgers, they work day in, day out with top class managers. Yeah. And so it's going to be difficult search to find somebody that garners gone, well, that respect, but I think that's very important. That, that, that's why what's interesting for me, I'm not picking on the new general secretary, but he doesn't come from a football background. So who are these people that he trusts that are providing him guidance in making this critically important decision. Well, I think he knows, decision. right? He knows he's got to trust other people. It's not always what you know. Right. It's understanding what you don't know. That's also been an issue with the board, and that's why I wonder how or if a presidential election may affect the search as well. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of next month, there will be a new president named. It will be um, the current president who is running once again in Charmaine Crooks. And we're reliably told, and unless something changes between now and then, uh, she will be running in opposition to Peter Agrusso, the, uh, the, the president uh, and, and chair of Ontario soccer, who's going to be running for that position as well. Could potentially a new president change the way that this search may play out, KJ? Well, it doesn't sound like it. I think, obviously, we'd be naive to say that that person wouldn't be involved, potentially, in the final decision-making. But there's a reason why a process is happening now. They understand the timeline that they're in, the consideration for Mauro Biola, consideration for international candidates, and to just wait to that moment to then restart the engine and get going again, I think would be an enormous mistake. They've recognised that. Uh, and as we said, look, we just showed the massive games that are coming up for this federation. They've got to get it right. And, and I, you know, whether it be Kevin Blue, whether it be somebody else, I think it screams for me that they need leadership in a technical football area. They don't have that leader of football right now that I think they would like. I personally think that this federation needs that is not just the head coach of the national team who runs that organization that has somebody with a football quality to look into. Maybe they'll get that eventually. But, the, but ultimately, to answer your question, um, no, I don't believe that they will wait for that. Interesting. Plenty of big decisions to be made. The manager of Canada, the pr president of Canada Soccer, registration fees, Project 8, all of this on the table in the coming weeks as we build forward towards the AAM, which will be uh, taking place the first weekend in the month of May. Uh, look, One Soccer Today, we'll dig into all of this. We continue to report, do our best to keep you informed on the latest and greatest in Canadian soccer. It's One Soccer Today, Monday and Thursdays, right here on One it's Soccer. Oh, no. <laughs> this is match night. That is today. We have a lot of times and dates and soccer and matches all included in all these show titles. Uh, we're going to look ahead into our crystal ball next on match night. Tony Bet. Bet, bet, bet. Tony Bet get treated like a VIP. Bet on live games with odds on all sorts of sports. That's what you get when you bet with Tony Bet. Bet, bet, bet. bet. Do we really have any choice at all? Everyone has a choice, and every choice has a consequence. Which do you choose? It's full of tough choices, isn't it? How do you choose? Gatorade. With electrolytes to help replenish what's lost in sweat. Carbs to help fuel your working muscles. And fluids to help you hydrate. 
scientifically formulated so you never stop competing. I do this for my town, my time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Gatorade. We created Carlsberg Zero Zero because even the best things can be better. Where I go if we be. Uh. Clean one-handed backhand is better. Balancing stuff is better. Whatever this is, is better. We created Carlsberg. Skipping your own ad is better. Parking in space. Better. So can the best alcohol free beer make good things better? Probably. Degree, 72 hour non stop protection. Antiperspirant with motion sense. Tested to the limit. Degree, keeps working when others stop. Final segment of the show, and we're gonna appropriately call this segment the final score. I like it. And it's presented by Tony Bet. The Canadian Premier League predictor is presented by Tony Bet. It's back, and it's always free to play, and this year you could win. $100,000 or a trip to the 2024 Canadian Premier League final. Visit predictor.canpl.ca for more information. There you see the final scores from a really solid match week one for the new season in the Canadian Premier League. In the spirit of this segment, we'll be ending tonight's show with some season predictions. Yes, we're a game in. 27 more to go for each team. Maybe we've got a taste. I wonder if any of our decisions were swayed but what we saw or didn't see this. Set mine in before, yeah. so. It's... Did you? <laughs> so did I. I didn't. <laughs> but but, but uh, I, I won't cheat here. Uh, look, these are the categories that we're going to deal with. And let's start off with the Canadian Premier League Shield. Who's going to win the regular season? Uh, are we going to unveil our picks or do we want to go one by one? Let's, right. let's yeah. unveil them. Do you want to unveil them? You okay, go? Let's go one by one. You Jordan, go? you can bat lead off. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. For me, it hasn't changed much. <laughs> Who won in 2023? I feel like is going to win in 2024. Calvary, again, I'll say on paper, but I have to go 10 toes down, are going to be the best side in 2024. They strengthen their team. They look like they have the longevity to go and do it. Yep. They look like they figured out health issues as well within their team. Knock on wood, you never know. But just looking at their squad, I think they're going to be there at the, at the end. So they're the winners. KJ? Uh, for me, there's two teams above the rest until I pr you've proven otherwise when it comes to winning these things. Uh, for me, I got Forge. Uh, I have Forge winning it. And only because I'm a big believer, and I saw Forge win it last year, that complacency a little bit can set in. Mm. Uh, and I just think Forge with Para, and when Cissé gets here, Borges, we've known, Batty Banger, a full season, uh, the way they played in the Champions League, a Champions Cup, I think they can do it and go get something, a piece of silverware they have yet to have mm. uh, and finish it all off. So. I get it. Um, I'm back in Cavalry just like Jordan. For one simple reason, you ask the managers what their priority is. Yeah. Wielden Jr. will always tell you <laughs> yep. that it's a regular season. He called the Canadian Premier League final a bonus last season. Bonus. And Bobby sticks with it. He says in North America, you play to win the last game of the season. And that's his approach. He's willing to give up something in order to see out that process. So. I'm uh, just going to stick with tried and true. 13 points last year. I think this Calvary did you, did you guys both pick a double? So, well, let's go to it. The, the <laughs> North did Star it, Cup. Did you pick a double? I didn't. And look, no, I can. Not, we sure did. We all, I, can, I could go first with Flip this one. We and you guys have already said, when it comes to a must win <laughs> match, yes. I cannot bet against Orange. Yes. I cannot. Look, you guys I are basically just predicting what happened already. I can't yeah, say anything based else on 2023. Happened. I cannot. And every other year. No chance. From <laughs> this day and age, no. I cannot go against Forge going and win that last match with Bobby Smirnionis with the Kyle Beckers. I took no Cavalry way. because I'm a believer that eventually, uh, if you get close enough and you learn how to lose and lose and lose again, 
uh, you have the ability to win. Uh, you're a man I, of faith, though, as well. I am. Right? Man of faith. And this, this, could be, this could be one of those things where you're, you're prophesying, but I just can't go against them. I flip-flopped a little bit. For me yeah. Guys. Again, I get it. The only time Merv Forge lost to the final, they were in Honduras like 72 they hours were. before that. And the game was played in lost, one of the worst weather nights. And they lost I can, to a set piece. I know. Yeah. I know. I just yeah. can't. I, I can't wanted to have a hipster out. pick. I just, I just couldn't do it here. Uh, next up, the Golden Boot. Oh, look at this. Three Ooh. different choices. <laughs> I look at KJ's face looking at my pick. Jordan's going for the okay. 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 Jordan Jordan wants to go first. first. Go for the right, go for the right winger. Look, last year was look, a good one. Look. I, because well, I'm saying this, Carlos Gonzalez is going to be listening to our segments. No way that he continues to play Ali Bassett as right wing. I also think where he chips in on goals are the free kicks, the set pieces, the the the, the penalties for sure. He'll still bag in, I think, 10 or 11 this season for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to count him out. Benny Badi Banger because I think he's going to win Player of the Year. And Ooh. I'm going to say this: if he does not perform at the level that they require him to be, and this is a high standard, I think Forge may not get silverware. He's that important to them. Uh, you know, as a team that struggles to get goals out of the number nine position, they've lost Rubens Passius. Terran Campbell scored goals last year, but only scored in six of 28 CPL games. Benny Badi Banga is arguably the best player in the Canadian Premier League. He's Ooh. already scored there, and I think I'd have him at least for 14 or 15. I'm, I'm old school. 14 or 15. I, I'm, I'm going to go with the best center forward, the best number nine right. in the Canadian Premier League. Picks. Where Odia scored 12 goals in a yeah. season before, I think he can do it again on a very attack minded team. Gabby Batar plant like man, I think Wero Diaz is gonna have a huge season. <laughs> the best signing heading into the season. Look at that. Look at Three this. Three different. Okay, KJ, you want to go first? Yeah, I'm gonna go Taylor first. Maria. Look, he's not the best player that's been signed. Uh, we could have gone in lots of different okay, directions. Okay, doing. But no, no, I mean this because there's obviously better players that have been signed. But in the Canadian Premier League, about Canada, Matteo De Brienne and Otto a kid who they had and let go mm. and should never have lost him in the first place, have brought him home. And at that age, if we want to. I understand we keep players in this league, but if we want to develop players, if Matteo Di Brian wants to be the next Jacob Schaffelberg, he's got a coach who can help him. He's got a coach that can develop his game, and that's why I think that is an outstanding signing for them. Look, of course, his expectations are not going to be bigger than Manny Aparicio, Balo Tabla, Amir Didic, and that may help him. There are bigger and better signings, but at that moment, for me, that's why I went with that one. Ooh. And Dom? Well and Dom. Uh, like, look, I went from the, you guys picked two familiar faces. Endom's a player that comes from pedigree playing in French football. Just see, he had a lot of fouls in that opening match against Halifax, but the way that he sprayed around the ball, those diags, I mean, he's, he's, he can be something special at the back and more than a fitting replacement. And you got for Balu. Him. I'm going to be quick for with Balu. If I, had, if I had $10 for so every time yeah. I said if Atletico Ottawa had Balu Tabla last yeah. season, I'd be a millionaire. All I right, one to watch, Jordan. Nana Ampoma, he's not even in the country yet. I know, and this is what you're talking That's about. That's why I didn't pick Cissé for the player. No, fair. Cissé yeah. would be a great shout, but look, from my reports and from my research, this is talent mixed with athleticism. This is someone they need. You say Benny Bedabanga, but someone else to go on the wing who could torch right backs or left backs in the Canadian Premier League, it is this guy, and I think he's going to score a bag of goals. I'll be brief. Uh, we've, had, we've been blessed with good Canadian goalkeepers in this league. It's time to take goalkeeping to another level in, this, in the Canadian Premier League, and I'm very impressed with what I've heard and seen about New York signing Tom Vincenzini. He's great with his feet, and I like the fact that we've got some international flavor in that position to help push Canadians. Uh, Let's go with his feet for sure. I'm in Salouf, seven goals, eight assists last season. Imagine if he starts more than half his games. This guy is a talent. He's 21. I thought about 22. you, but I've been watching him already. Guy, he's not his one to no, watch. no, but he's going to be that much better. <laughs> you love him. By the way, um, you love Salou. Again, quality player. Gabby quality. Batar on a Vancouver team that's going to challenge for silverware this year. Exciting year, boys. How did that hour go so fast in the show? Because we love footy. Try what another concept hour in Canada boys. talking about football. Go to predictor.canpl.ca for CPL Predictor presented by Tony Bat. We'll see you next week right here on Match Night. Match Night! First show in the books. Nice work. Have a good week, He's everybody. He's KJ, he's Jordo. On behalf of One Soccer, I'm Wheels, and this has been Match Night. Right here in your home for Canadian football, it's One Soccer.
As I've gotten older, it's strange because obviously I'm only 22 still, but I've been trying to grow into a role that I can see myself playing for this team. And obviously there's bumps in the road and I think like it's this team and the staff are so supportive throughout it all. And it's been a little bit of an evolution and I look to keep pushing that in the upward projection, but um, it's definitely felt good over the last few months, yeah. Oh!